Hello and welcome to AmiPal, the number one place on the internet for the sweetest Amiga content. You might notice I've got my A500 plugged in with this uh, gorgeous version 1.3 kickstart displayed. Um, there's a reason for that and that reason is Dread. Yes, we have a playable demo of Dread, the brand new up until now tech demo of basically a Doom style game for the Amiga 500. That's right, the Amiga 500. We're not talking a accelerated A1200 or an A4000 with an 060 in it. We're not even talking about an A500 with one of the magical vampire accelerators on board. This is a 680 however you want to pronounce it. Bog standard A500. Um, I haven't even plugged in the RAM expansion into it, so there's just 512K on board. Uh, like I said, Kickstart 1.3, um, and apparently it runs. And not only does it run, it runs well. However, I need to be able to get it on there. And currently my F500 has a floppy drive and I have no way to get the executable or the ADF burnt, written, written onto a floppy disk. Um, so, it's the perfect time for me to install a GoTech. For the uninitiated, a GoTech is a floppy drive replacement where you can plug a USB thumb drive, thumb stick, whatever you want to call it, mass storage device um, that contains um, disk images. You plug that into a USB port on the GoTech and then you can select which disk you've inserted into the drive. And then it basically operates like a floppy drive. So. Um, you can have a mass storage device absolutely filled to the brim with ADF files and basically move between them and load them as you see fit. Um, I haven't used GoTech before uh, because all of my floppy drives seem to read okay. Um, it's the writing that's the issue. Really must look into that. Anyway, I need to open up this A500. I need to unplug the floppy drive and get a GoTech installed. So that's my next step. Well, I said installing it was the next step, but uh, instead I'm just going to show you the GoTech. Um, this is it, as you can see. Um, I've actually got it upside down at present. But uh, here we are, we've got a display screen which shows which disk image you've got loaded. Here's the USB port for sticking in the device. And then we've got some buttons to function, do stuff with the device. I don't really know. Um, and then we've got a, a rotary dial. I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, and then on the back, we have some jumpers for configuration. We've got the floppy port itself where, where the connector will plug in. And then we've got power. Um, I've bought one from Mega Kit. Uh, it comes in this nice kit, this nice case, um, and should just slot into the existing cradle that's already there. But one thing I'm gonna point out um, I didn't know at the time, but, and this is where I should have done some research, <laughs> um, the rotary dial does mean that you have to adapt the case to get it in. So I'm just, I'm probably gonna have to do something else with it, um, or whether or not I can take that off, I don't know. But um, let's see where we go with this. So here we are in the immediate near future. We have opened up the A500, this beautiful, Commodore Amiga 500 um, with 512K of RAM. As you can see, we've got empty bits here, so we know we've got 512K here. Um, and also I'll point out there's nothing in the expansion slot underneath, so no memory expansion, just the 512K on the motherboard itself. Um, you'll see over here, we've got the 68K processor. Um, Nothing fancy, no O2O or O3O, nothing like that. None of the terrible fires or the uh, Witcher cards. Just a box standard A500 with the OCS chipset of Denise and Agnes for display. Um, 1.3 ROMs on there as well, sorry, over here. Um, and what are we doing? We are going to leave the floppy drive in there because I don't really want to take it out. Um, but I'm going to unplug the floppy cable itself and unplug the power cable. Now, quite helpfully with 
the Amiga Kit um, GoTech drive, they give you this huge length of cable. I mean, it goes across the entire length of the A500. So theoretically, I shouldn't have any um, issue here basically putting the GoTech outside the case. Uh, even with a bend in it, it will happily go outside the expansion slot on the left hand side there or maybe I don't know I'll pop it through underneath I haven't really decided just yet what I don't want to do is have to alter the case in any way to snake the cable out um, despite the fact that there being a, a huge bit of plastic there that will quite happily facilitate a cable of this sort um, as well as if we try and get it through there we're going to have it closing on the case. The case is going to be closing on it, should I say, so we could damage the cable, could damage the case, which I don't really want to do. Uh, bear in mind the age of the case. Um, the power cable for the GoTech as well um, is a similar length. So basically, we, we don't have any issue with where we're going to put the GoTech. The only problem I'll probably have is because of the size of the A500 as a whole, um, I'm going to have to have the GoTech somewhere that's not going to get in the way. Um, my first thought was putting it through the expansion trapdoor slot here but then it's going to get in the way of the mouse on that side so I don't really want to do that. Um, so I'm going to probably experiment with it coming out the what we'd say is the the Zorro slot as such um, because I don't have anything plugged into it. I don't have like an ACA 500 or anything like that. I don't have uh, a big external hard drive unit with this Amiga. So enough banding around the bush, let's get these cables plugged in and a GoTech plugged into those. Well that was a quick job, um, here we are, I've just kind of tucked these in here. The, this isn't powered in any way so this, this cable being loose, um, you know, that's, that's what takes power from the motherboard, it's not plugged into in, anything. Similarly this uh, floppy cable, I'm just going to leave it there. Um, I don't have an issue with that. I'd rather not have to fill up my storage boxes with more um, old floppy drives. Um, as you can see, I've just rooted it down and around the sides here. Um, there is a GoTech attached just out the side. Um, will I keep it there? I don't know. I mean, what I could do is just unplug it whenever I'm not using it. Um, but at the moment, I'm doing this just because I want to try Dread. So <laughs> we'll. Uh, We'll leave that as is for now. I'm going to put the um, the keyboard and the case back on, probably leave the metal shield off for now. Um, not that you really need it in this day and age anyway, um, but uh, I kind of feel bad getting rid of it just for getting rid of it. You know, it's made it this long. Um, plus I've already got the, uh, the blood sacrifice. So at least we'll know this will work. So there's the flash floppy logo on the GoTech and we have a screen. Let's uh, drop the exposure a bit. Fantastic. So we are working. I'm liking this. Okay. Now I need to copy some files to the USB stick that also comes from Amiga Kit. So uh, bear with me. Now, when you first go into the GoTech, um, you're presented with this, which is basically a way for you to configure what is sitting in the various slots, the 0 to 999 slots on the GoTech itself. So you can see I've got some ADFs already here. Um, selector ADF basically just boots into a list of the ADFs you've got. But from here, if I um, press enter on one of the other ADFs. Um, you can see we've, we've got loads and loads and loads of slots. Uh, this is flash floppy, by the way, you can see from the bottom, firmware FF. So what I'm doing here is configuring which disks go in which slots. Um, so I've got a, a 1.3 workbench and the 1.3 extras disks for one and two, and then the dread disk in three. Now. I was doing this earlier and I couldn't for the life of me actually get whatever I put in there to stick. But there's this wonderful help section um, on here, which, um, well, it tells you in the title screen at the beginning. Uh, but of course, I didn't read it. Anyway, uh, the wonderful people at the Commodore Amiga Facebook group 
help me on my way and uh, here I am so we hit F7 that saves what's on there and now it reboots and because I was selected at that time on that disc we're now booting into that disc so onwards so here we are in Webbench 1.3 booted straight from the ADF file um, and I'll just give you an example of the speed of an ADF file. Um, it's a floppy drive emulator, so it's only going to be as fast as an actual floppy disk. Um, you can see at the top here, uh, we've got very little memory. That is just chip RAM, that's 512K. Um, I've since read up on the specs of Dread, and that's not going to be enough for what we need for Dread. So I'm going to pop the uh, the memory expansion in the trapdoor and uh, we'll reboot with that image. So I've inserted the Dread ADF and now it's going to boot from the GoTech. Another reminder that this is a floppy emulator so it's not going to load um, at faster speeds just because it's right, uh, reading it off of the USB stick so I'm afraid we must wait. There it is, the title screen. Let's have a look at some options. Stereo sound, sound filter. Let's put it at 15, because I like a fast mouse. Let's go. So this is Dread, running on a one megabyte Amiga 500. Um, Turn using the mouse, move using cursor keys, fire with the mouse button. I'm really enjoying the art style on this, um, considering the limited palette, it's amazing what they've come up with. And you can really see those en enemies from a distance as well, that bright blue visor. Oh, there's another one. Brilliant. Now, visually, it's kind of looking a bit like gloom, but that is okay. This is a seven megahertz, well, seven and a bit, um, megahertz 68000 processor. Just using the original chipset, and you can see it shifts. There, this is this is faster than a lot of the A1200 ones. I haven't got a red key yet. So Alien Breathe 3D and Gloom. And this is this is just a, an A500, a one megabyte A500. I, I'll keep repeating that because I'm just astounded from what I'm seeing. Amazing. Now at the moment, we've got more of like a, a, a Wolfenstein flat floor and ceiling. Um, Although you can see that we've got some height uh, to the levels as well. Um, so whether or not we eventually see some ground and some sky or some uh, textures, I mean, or we see, I'm a bit lost by the way, <laughs> or we see uh, stairs, for instance, um, like Doom. Boom, destructible terrain. This is amazing. I'm just gonna keep saying that, this is amazing. So that is how you install a GoTech in order to run Dread. I mean, it's not just to run Dread, is it? You could, you can put anything else on that disc that you find. You might have um, a bunch of other games that you wanna add on, uh, or like me, boot into Workbench, just to see that wonderful 1.3 workbench. The sound effects work really well on this too. You've got a really good idea of where people are just from what you're hearing. Through here. Oh my goodness. 
Ha! Get up close and personal and just take them out. I meant, didn't mention actually that I've just picked up a, a, a shotgun. Um, so that's nice, isn't it? Something a bit more powerful. Anything hidden around here? No, no. Anyway, this is Dread. I hope you found this useful. Um, and are impressed by what we're seeing as I am. I don't know how many times I've recorded this section, uh, this conclusion. Um, basically, I'm, I'm so impressed by this, I can't really put it into words. I'm, I'm truly agog at dread at what KK and Altia have managed to achieve on such limited hardware. One megabyte A500. It, it's magic, it's clearly magic, it has to be right um <laughs> you're looking at about 10 to 14 frames a second from what i've read uh for the a500 box standard a500 i'll mention it again um on an a1200 i believe it's something closer to 25 frames a second but of course we've got the 68 ec020 in there and two meg of chip ram um i have run it on the beast um that's a 68060 of course just to remind you um I had to disable the CPU caches for that to actually work, but work it does, and very fast it is. Um, I'll post a link for KK and Altier's YouTube channel down here. They've asked not to share the actual download link themselves um, because they want to get an idea of how many people are downloading. It's very similar to the Putty Squad uh, link uh, from a few years ago. So um, please do look at their channel. Subscribe, please, because they are well deserving of your time. They are very clever and very talented people. Um, I'm still astounded by it. As for the GoTech, um, very useful. Um, I don't have a hard disk in my A500. It's got the 1.3 kickstart, so theoretically you can mount a hard drive in there. Um, but I never had a hard drive in my A500 um, back in the early 90s, so I don't really feel like it would be my A500, if you see what I mean. Uh, the GoTech kind of allows me to put in floppy disks in a similar fashion as I used to when I was playing it, like Christmas Day with my brother kind of thing. So um, it seems more in keeping with this beautiful machine. And of course it meant that I could load up Dread. Um, that's, that's actually the only reason I installed it. I've had it for a while. Um, and what a brilliant reason to get it plugged in. Um, I'd like to thank the people on the Commodore Amiga Facebook group. They were very helpful in um, navigating through the menus and get things set up. Um, you can search on Google for GoTech, um, but you kind of end up getting into a bit of a loop as to what you should be doing. And there's a lot of confusion. Uh, the hardware is the GoTech and you've got different kind of um, firmware on it. HXC, I think is one of them. And then Flash Floppy is the free more up-to-date one, more versatile one. Um, so your mileage may vary depending on which website you land on. Um, but again, thank you to those people for assisting me. Very helpful. Um, and you stopped me from pulling out what little hair I have left. So um, I'll wrap this up. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below and uh, cheers. <laughs>